Welcome back to our online video Bible study on the book of Colossians. Uh, if this is the first video you've come across and would like to go back to the beginning of the series, you can click on the box right here. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you that you have given us the gift of your word, that we might read it, mark it, learn it, and inwardly digest it. So we do that this day. Send your blessing upon us. We ask it in Christ's holy name. Amen. Today we're going to look at just a few verses in Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, and then next time uh, we'll finish up uh, this book of Colossians going through uh, the various greetings and things that Paul gives at the end of this book of Colossians. Uh, we want to always remember, of course, the general context. Paul has been telling the Colossian Christians that their real hope, their real wisdom, their real understanding is in Christ. Uh, and that they have been baptized into him, and that they should rejoice and hold fast to that faith uh, that they have been given. Uh, we're in this section now where Paul is now exhorting these Christians who have been baptized into Christ uh, about what they should be doing with their lives. Uh, he's told them things that they should get out of their lives. He's told them things that they should put on in their lives. And here he's going to have a few instructions about uh, their prayer life, uh, and especially as it relates to Paul's own life. Let's read here in verse 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the word, to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. Paul here says several things. One, he says, please be steadfast in your prayer. Continue praying. And particularly here, he is asking for prayer for himself. Uh, Paul does this often in his letters uh, because Paul understood that his missionary journeys were not really just his own work, uh, but really it was work that he was doing on behalf of God and his church. And so Paul always asked that the people that he was writing to would keep him in prayer. Uh, a good reminder for us always that we should always keep uh, pastors and missionaries in our prayers uh, at all times as they do the work that we have set them apart, uh, that God has set them apart also to do. Um, he says then, right, pray for us that God may open the door uh, that they would be able uh, to speak more of the word of God. Uh, Paul writes this letter, if you remember, in prison uh, and Paul makes clear in other letters that he is able to do missionary work even in prison, uh, talking to the various people that are there, even the, the guards and things like that. Uh, but he asks here that he might be able to be freed in order that there would be a place for him to present the word of God more freely. Paul says here that he hopes there will be that door open in order that he can declare the mystery of Christ in order that he might make it clear. You see, our faith, the knowledge of Jesus and the salvation in him, remains a mystery until it is proclaimed to someone. This is not something that someone can simply discover uh, walking outside along a path. They can't all of a sudden come to the realization that Jesus came and died for them. Uh, and so he prays that he has this open door so that he can proclaim that mystery. As scriptures are clear, there are things we can know about God from nature. Uh, we can look around uh, and see all of the things that he has created, and that can teach us many things about the nature of God. But one thing it will never teach us is about the nature of salvation, how it is that God saves his people from sin. That only occurs as someone proclaims that word to us. Uh, and so here again, the Christians in Colossia are exhorted to pray that Paul would have more and more opportunities to do that, to take that revelatory word that he has been given to speak and speak it boldly and plainly and freely in order that more people would get the mystery of how God would save the world in Christ Jesus. He then says, conduct yourselves wisely towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So Paul here makes clear that first and foremost, the ministry of the word is going on through him and his missionary efforts. 
But this does not mean that the people have nothing to do, that the people cannot also be working on helping to reveal the mystery that is Christ and the places where God has sent them. Uh, this is always important for us to recognize. Here is the, really the difference between pastors, missionaries, and lay people, is that pastors and missionaries have been set apart to do this work constantly. It is their job. It is their first concern. And so we pray for them in order that they would have those opportunities to speak the gospel. Those that live as lay people in the church do not have a job that enables them to spend 40 hours a week uh, studying the scriptures, proclaiming the scriptures. But, Paul says, that doesn't mean that you are not important in God's plan of making sure this mystery gets out. He says, no, you too, right, uh, should be wise about how you use your time. Uh, Paul talks often, right, the time is short, and that means... Paul is always aware that Christ could come at any moment. And so we can't simply, any of us as Christians, say, well, you know, I'll get around to speaking of Christ someday. He says, no, the time is short. Be wise about it. And so conduct yourselves with that wisdom and speak to people when you are given opportunities in your places where God has called you to serve. Right. So if you have that opportunity uh, after work when someone... Uh, is looking down to speak to them and to tell them of Christ, that's great. If you're at school and you have a chance to speak to a friend about Christ, that's great. Be wise about those opportunities uh, in the places where God has already placed you uh, to be. So make the best use of your time. And then he says your speech should be gracious and it should be seasoned with salt. Have you ever had a food that you know should be good? but yet it needs a little more salt, or it needs some salt, and you can't find any, right? You kind of eat the food, and it's like, oh, man, you know, this is not what it should be. It needs that salt in order that it would just taste perfectly. That's really the metaphor that Paul is using here, that our speech should be gracious first. In other words, we're not to just be harsh with people. Uh, we're not just to be rude. We're not just to go out and tell people nothing but that they're going to hell. But instead, we're to be gracious and wise and think, what are the ways in which I can communicate to this person the mystery of Christ? Uh, that's the seasoning it with salt. Make it so that if possible, it can taste good going in their mouth. A lot of this simply comes from knowing our neighbors and our friends' situations in life so that we know where that word of God is necessary, and we also then know what word of God is necessary. There certainly are times when we need to speak to someone the pure law of God. They need to hear that their lives, as they are leading them, will lead them nothing but to hell. They need to hear that. Other times, though, people need to hear nothing but the gospel. They don't need to hear one more condemnatory word. They need to hear only that Jesus has died for them. But that's what we have to know is how do we season the word that we are speaking in order that we'll speak it well uh, to those people, uh, that it will meet them right where they are. This can also refer to even the style of speech we use. Uh, we might know that someone speaks in a certain way or likes stories or doesn't like stories, likes kind of analytical thinking. Uh, we want to know who we're talking to and be wise about it and try to speak to them in the way uh, that will best get across the gospel to them. Um, right? That's what it says at the end. So you may know how you ought to answer each person. Uh, anybody knows this. You may have something that you have to tell five people, uh, and you may have to tell all of them in a different way to really get it across. Right? If it's a kid, you may have to tell them one way. If it's an adult, you may have to tell them another way. If it's someone that's highly educated, you have, may have to tell them one way. And if it's someone that's more simple, uh, you may have to tell them a different way. And Paul says, Take the time. Be wise about this. Think through it. Think how is it that I can best present the mystery of Christ to people in the places where God has called me to serve. So yes, in these few verses that we covered today, Paul first exhorts the Christians that they would pray for him and his ministry, that he's been set apart to do full time, uh, to work day after day, uh, right now even being in prison for doing that work. Uh, that's what he asks them to pray for. That's where this ministry of the word that's been entrusted to Paul goes on time and time again. It is his whole existence to do that. 
for the rest of the Christians that he tells them as they go out and serve God in the various places they are called to be, they should look for those opportunities, especially with outsiders, right, with those outside of the faith, and think about how best they can speak the word of God, the truth of the mystery of Christ to them. So that's the word for you this day as well. Right? Pray for your pastors, pray for missionaries as they go about doing that work that they have been set apart to do. Pray that they will have opportunities to share the gospel boldly and freely. But then also, right, take seriously those that you have around you. Think about who you're working with, who you're playing with, who you're studying with, whatever it might be. And think, what are the best ways that I can truly share the gospel with this person? Uh, is it by speaking to them? Is it by introducing them to a piece of music? Is it by some other means? Whatever it is, be wise. The time is short. We don't know how long we have left to reach those outsiders, those who have yet to be baptized into Christ Jesus and to have the wonderful grace of God flowing in their lives at all times. So remember that. The time is short. Pray for your pastors. Look around you. Be gracious, be wise with those outsiders around you. And know that God the Holy Spirit goes with you and before you to help you do this work well. That You might know how you ought to speak. That's where we'll end today. Probably a little shorter than the other sessions, but next time uh, we will finish up the book as we look at the various greetings that Paul sends at the end of the book of Colossians. I hope all is well with you. I hope that you are continuing to enjoy this video Bible study. As always, you can send me comments or questions at pastor at ihoppy.com or leave a comment on our Facebook page. The Lord be with you. Amen.